Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, I will summarize the three major groups of Triassic archosauromorphs. The first group of basal archosauromorphins from the Triassic period are the Protosauria, or the Prolassoterformes. The term Protoriosauria indicates that the group contains the primitive Protorosaurus, which the term Prolassiformes indicates a monophyletic group of early archosauromorphins that split off early. Now, this group uh, roughly is divided into two families, the Tenostrophidae and the Drapanosauridae. The Tendostrophidae are a really unusual group that includes Tendostrophilus, an extremely long-necked animal with a length of about four meters. The post-atlas axis cervical vertebrae are elongated into eight tube-like vertebrae. Cervical ribs likely made the neck really stiff. What was a strange animal like this doing with such a long neck? There are two theories. The first is that the animal was fully aquatic and swam with a long neck like a plesiosaur, feeding on marine invertebrates and fish. Fossil skeletons are found in marine units and the stomach contains uh, marine cephalopods and fish, supporting this theory. Yet the skeleton is not designed for a fully aquatic lifestyle with a sm smaller unflattened tail and they lack flippers in the limbs. The other theory is that the animal used the long neck like a fishing pole, lowering its head over the shoreline and diving its head into the water to catch fish and other marine animals. Like a modern day herring, the long stiff neck meant that it could reach out further into the water to dive after prey. There would be a selective advantage to having a long neck to catch more fish. The next group of Prolassiformes are the family Drapanosauridae, which are found in the Middle Triassic of Italy and in the American Southwest, as well as in Australia and North Africa. These are really strange animals. Macronemius resembled a lizard with elongated necks and skin covered in scales like modern lizards. Later forms include Drapanosaurus, which had a hook-like tail and massively large claws. It's thought that they were arboreal animals using their hook tail to hang from branches, although a recent reconstruction of the forelimb uh, from a skeleton from the Chinle Formation in New Mexico has been suggested as being highly specialized for digging using their hook-like arms. The skull of the closely related Megalacosaurus shows that it had a bird-like skull and a very stiff shoulder girdle using its neck to possibly catch insects like modern chameleons do, slowly extending the neck and able to quickly lunge to catch insect prey. The bird-like skulls and unusual skeletons have historically been involved in discussions of both bird and pterosaur origins. The well-preserved calcaneum and astragalus bones in Longbardiosaurus are distinct, indicating possible rotation with the astragalus bone associated with the distal tibia, but not fused with it, a primitive condition. The Prolassiformes would disappear in the late Triassic. The next group are the Trilophosauridae, a strange group of reptiles that feature 
peg-like teeth likely used for in eating plants. They exhibit a uriapsid condition with the lower temporal fenestra being lost. Primitive members have an anorbal fenestra, which is lost in some of the advanced forms. They have a beak-like um, snouts, and based on their claws, they were likely arboreal animals living in trees. The final group are one of the more common middle to late Triassic fossils, the Rhynchosauridae, which are known from every continent except Australia and Antarctica. They have a single nostril <laughs> opening in the front of the skull, a large beak-like premaxillary bones that overlap with a hook-like dentary bone to produce a strange uh, snapping jaw. Rows of teeth on the palate, but absent from the front of the mouth. The skeleton is very upright and they show adaptations for digging. In the next video, we'll look at the major split that occurred in more advanced archosauromorphins, which are simply called the archosaurs. This split would lead to the origin of the crocodilians and the origin of the pterosaurs and dinosaurs. For now, be sure to recognize the three basal groups, the Prolacetiformes, the uh, Trilophosauridae, and the Rhynchosauridae. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own webpage at benjamin Links are found in the description below.